This year, it's gonna be my year. It's January 2024, and how many of y'all are saying that right now? As a photographer and content creator, I've said this to myself every January 1st since 2015. And while I've managed to make a lot of progress, it's never been as easy as simply claiming it's my time. So today I'm going over the harsh truths and lessons I've learned in my creative career to speed up your growth in 2024. My mission today isn't to offend anyone or come off rude. I'm doing this because I really love helping y'all and I want to help you avoid all the pitfalls and mistakes that I made so this year can actually be your year. And big thank you to MPB for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. So let's get into everything we got to talk about today. Honestly, these are just realities that you have to face as a photographer in 2024. They're not exactly harsh. They're only going to feel harsh if deep down you know this is something you need to correct and me saying it just hits close to home to you. So all of the things that I've learned in this video are based on my own experience and experiences working with other creators. I do a lot of coaching through my website, evanramp.com, through moderncreativemoney.com, coaching through emails, through video calls, and everything on this list is something that comes up time and time again in these coaching calls. So first and foremost is social media, all right? If you are a photographer, you just have to accept that social media is either something you're going to participate in or not. There is no gray area in social media in 2024. Either it's a part of your business or it's not, and that's completely fine. It's up to you to decide, but a lot of photographers seem to be very upset with how social media is treating them, and if that's you, just don't participate. You know, Go create a business structure and a model that operates outside of social media. Build up your portfolio, get into a network of people who share the same interest as you, the things you wanna capture, the things you wanna photograph, and focus on serving that community. Build out your portfolio, send it to brands who serve that community, and just have Instagram be something fun. If Instagram and social media is a giant negative energy drain for you, just leave it alone. And if you want to use social media to build your business, because we all know social media has quite a bit of leverage. If you have a good social media brand, there's ways to make money simultaneously when you're out working, while you're sleeping, have passive income. If you want to do that, just accept social media as what it is. You have to adapt. There's been a lot of changes. Years ago, video was not a part of social media. Now it is, and it's up to you to figure out how that fits into your business. But rather than complaining about it, just accept that this is the new way of doing things and adapt to it. And I've gotten so tired of hearing people complain about this. I actually made a free guide on my website, evanramp.com, that you can go download. Just add it to your cart check out like a normal purchase and there's nothing charged to you you get the download and in that guide I really wanted to focus on avoiding the stereotypical advice of just post more often share to your story every day I wanted to focus more on the mindset and mission and the objective you need to have with your content so you can be a photographer excelling in the new Instagram environment that we all have to deal with now speaking of video that is the second thing I want to talk about for photographers if you're looking to grow your business in 2024, one way to make a lot more money is to accept that video is a big part of everything nowadays. Like I mentioned, if you're using Instagram as an example, years ago, video wasn't really a thing on Instagram. Now it is, and clients and people you could potentially be working with are looking for photos as well as video. And if you learn the basics of video, which if you have any photography skills, learning the basics of video, it's really easy. You already understand composition, you understand lighting, you understand your camera, your settings. All you gotta understand now is how to just put it all together into a quick Instagram reel or a quick vertical video, and you can start to include that in your packages with clients. So you can do photo and basic video. I'm not saying that wedding photographers also have to be wedding videographers. That's a completely different thing. I'm just speaking on giving yourself more options. For example, maybe you're a 
photographer who services small businesses and you use your photography to help those businesses grow. If you have video basics under your belt, you can now include short form video packages with the photography you're doing and you can help that brand grow even more on social media, making your business more valuable, which in turn will help you earn more money. It's just something to think about. Video is unavoidable at this point and most photographers have the fundamental base to excel in some type of video and I think a lot of people are just choosing to have blinders on and ignore that. So real quick, I want to interrupt today's video to thank our sponsor, MPB. MPB is an amazing tool for photographers, especially those of you looking to accelerate your business as well as your artwork in 2024. MPB is the largest global platform to buy, sell, and trade used camera and videography gear. MPB is not a marketplace. They are a platform that buys camera gear directly from visual storytellers like you and me and their team of product specialists evaluate each each item before reselling them. This makes MPB a much more trustworthy platform than traditional marketplace selling methods. And they have over 24,000 Trustpilot reviews with a score of 4.8, which is pretty insane for an internet business. Now, the main camera that I use is the Leica SL2. This camera retails for $6,000, but on MPB, you can get this for almost half the price. So if you're a photographer looking to grow your business and prove your skills, but you wanna save some money, MPB is is an amazing option to get awesome equipment at a price that's much more affordable. And with it being the new year, if you have gear that you want to sell, maybe you're not using it as much as you want, MPB is a fantastic option to make that happen. And if you need to move some pieces around, make your kit more efficient, MPB as a platform, in my opinion, is the best platform to do this online. So you can head to the link in the description to find out more. But big thank you to MPB for sponsoring today's video and being a part of the channel. Now, the third thing we have to talk about is much more mindset based and that is understanding a clear why getting an idea of why you're making pictures in the first place what are you doing what's the objective of your business and defining a clear why is going to be different for everyone but if you're someone who's struggling to find a why for your photography what i recommend is thinking about what you want to do with your photography when you remove success and money from the equation those two things can kind of dilute your mission a lot of people of course want to be successful a lot of people of course want more money because money equates to more freedom more resources more time all types of different things but but when you remove those things, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a photographer who documents the environment, shares the beauty of the world around them? Do you want to be a photographer who tries to tell stories with their image to service a certain community? Maybe you like to go hiking, you like to be outdoors, and maybe you feel that the photography that represents this world is not doing a good job of painting that picture and you want to change that. That becomes your mission. Maybe you're someone who feels like women are not showcased properly in the fashion fashion industry and you want to change that with your photography. Having a mission and a goal with your pictures allows you to have more of a direction with your business and whatever it is that you're doing. And the success and money is simply a byproduct of that direction and of that vision. Now assessing your why is something you can do at any time throughout the year. But because I'm recording this video in January 2024, if you're catching this video in January or February, this is an amazing time to pull out a journal, pull out your notes app on your iPhone and sit down and contemplate what the reason is for everything that you're doing. And I think a lot of you might struggle with this more than you think. This is one of the biggest problems I see when I talk to other creators. I ask them, what's your objective? What's the reason for you doing this? And a lot of them don't have a quick, easy answer. And just to give you an example of what a why looks like, my reason for this YouTube channel in 2024 is to take all the experiences that I've gained in the last 10 years. My why for the last 10 years has varied quite a bit, but now I want to focus on giving all this information to y'all and helping as many people as possible achieve their goals with their creativity. 
I managed to do it, and now I want to share that with other people while still dabbling and exploring my own creativity in these videos. Stuff like the intro sequences you see on videos, or the b-roll I shoot, or the photos that come up in topic videos is a way for me to tap into my creativity while sharing all this information and helping as many people as possible. Now the fourth truth we have to confront as photographers in 2024 is addressing our self-sabotage. Now this is a very complicated topic, one that there's way more qualified people to talk about than me. One book that I absolutely love on this is called The Mountain Is You. I definitely recommend checking that out if you find yourself constantly making decisions or doing things that contradict what it is that you consciously want. And the way self-sabotage works is you essentially have two stories that you're telling yourself and they contradict one another. You have a conscious story. So as a photographer, you're probably telling yourself you want to be seen by as many people as possible. You want your work to be out in the world and you want money and success from that. But subconsciously, you have a framework that you've built into the way you think and the way you operate. And a lot of times, this framework is holding you back from what you actually want. And you have to address this before you can actually get the things that you desire. Like I said, I'm not an expert on this. That's not the greatest description. Do some research for yourself. But an example of this in my own personal life is when I first started this YouTube channel. I was making YouTube videos and consciously I wanted this channel to be as big as possible. I wanted a lot of followers. I wanted the success that came with that. I wanted all the eyeballs and I wanted the money that can be a byproduct of that. But deep down, I had this fear of not being liked. I really wanted people to enjoy the content I was making and I didn't want to offend anyone. And everything I made had this mindset subconsciously baked into it. I never really shared my true opinion. I never really got close to the ledge where I would possibly offend some people with what I was saying. And as a result, my channel never really grew to the point that I wanted it to grow to. And in the last couple years, I've seen a lot more success, but I've also upset a lot more people and I found a lot more negative comments on my social media and that's just a byproduct of me getting over this subconscious idea that I needed everyone to like me. I realized if I want the success that I want, not everyone is going to like me and I needed to become okay with that to reach my goals. And for you, this could be something like wanting a lot of money, but deep down being worried that people who have a lot of money scam people or thinking that people who have a lot of money are unethical. And you have to get over that subconscious thought to actually reach your final goal. The fifth truth we have to confront in 2024 is acknowledging that failure is how we find our voice. Every time you fail, you're putting yourself closer to your edge. And that failure represents you taking a chance to receive new information, new information that can make you better. Failure is not a bad thing, and it's not something you should be scared of. Failure indicates that you are trying to grow. Think about any time of your life that's been challenging for you, that's been difficult. Usually you come out the other side of those periods in your life, a better person, a more successful person, and you have all this new information information to draw from. That is all failure is. So if you want to send a pitch email to a client and you're worried that you might not get a response, send it. Who cares? If they don't respond, all that means is maybe you need to write a better email next time. That's new information that you can use to be better. If you want to post an Instagram reel and you've never done it before, post it. If it gets no views, that's okay. That's new information letting you know how you can do better in the future. Continue to show up and iterate on these failures and these failures will lead you to the success you want. Do not fear rejection. Do not fear failure. It's just going to hold you back in life. This is one thing that I've actually excelled at throughout my career. I've always been okay with something not working. I just put myself out there, continue to show up, and treat every day like day one. Back way a long time ago when I started this YouTube channel, I had this mindset where I wanted to treat every video like it was my best video I could make, even if no one watched it, because I knew by treating the video as the best video, the next video could be even better, and the next one could be better. And over time, these continuing stackings, continuing stackings, that's ridiculous. All right, at this point, I'm ranting on this one, but this is very important. 
important to me. I just knew that if I tried to be my best every single day, that this new best, new best, new best would accumulate over time and eventually I would reach the type of video that I wanted to make. And you can do the same thing with your photography, with your artwork, with your business, with your website, whatever it is that you're trying to build. Just treat every day like a new start and try to be your best for that day and let the results accumulate and compound over time. Now, number six on this list is kind of a tough one, but it's understanding that you're not entitled to anyone's attention. Photographers, myself included, we have egos. We think that we're making the greatest thing ever every single time we do it. But if someone is not paying attention to your work, if you're not getting response emails from clients, if you're not getting the feedback you want on social media, that is because you're not doing something that commands their attention and you're not entitled to that attention. So what do you do if you're not getting the attention you want? You iterate on what you're doing to try to create something better. Create a portfolio that is more attractive to a potential client. Create an Instagram reel that entertains better, inspires better, educates better. Give people something with what you're creating and that will bring you the attention that you're looking for. Attention is simply a byproduct of you doing something well. And if you're not receiving that attention, don't be bitter about it, don't be upset, don't blame Instagram, don't blame an algorithm, don't blame the world, people not understanding you. Focus on you. Look inward and create something that commands the attention you're looking for. And I guarantee over time, you'll get exactly what you want. Now, number seven on this list is a quick one, but it's understanding that who you are is just as important as what you create. Your personality, the way you treat other people, reflects on your brand just as much as your photography work. Now, there is a small subcategory of artists and creative people who can be absolute nightmares to work with. They can be jerks, they can be mean to their audience, and they just get a pass because their work is so incredible. I'm assuming that most of us are not in that category. After all, I'm making a YouTube video. I'm not the mysterious artist, and you're watching a YouTube video, so you're obviously trying to learn something. So if we're in that normal category of creative person, we need to focus on the intangibles of our personality and be someone that is enjoyable to work with, someone who's professional, someone who people want to have around. This will excel your career so much farther than the person who is not enjoyable to be around, the person who doesn't care about their audience, the person who doesn't care about their clients. If you actually care and you treat your photography business like an actual business and you're not just in it for yourself, this is going to go a long way. There is so much business that I get on the social media side of things that is predicated on relationships that I've built year after year after year by just being professional and reliable and showing up for my clients. And nowadays I do a lot of business over text message. Someone will just send me a job and say, hey, are you interested in doing this? Because they know I'm reliable. The intangibles of my brand are there, and I've set a precedent that I'm someone who actually cares about the people that I'm working with. And if you can do that, you're probably gonna beat out the person who has better work than you who isn't doing any of these things. Now, number eight on this list is recognizing that consumption on social media is just procrastination in disguise. Most of us will get on our phones and look for ideas. We're looking for inspiration, but deep down, most of us know this never actually works. We end up just scrolling through the phone for hours, we're bombarded with all this information, and we never come up with a new original idea because we're not allowing those ideas to enter our brain. I have a video all about this on the channel. I'll go ahead and link it in the description down below, but I love this Rick Rubin quote where he talks about humans being vehicles for inspiration. Ideas are out in the world, and we have an antenna that allows these ideas to come to us. But to get these ideas, you have to do things that open up this antenna, free the channel essentially for these ideas. Doing things like going out on walks, journaling, exercising, doing something that puts your brain into a place where these ideas can come to you. Sitting on your phone and scrolling through other people's ideas and looking for inspiration that way never works and it's time that we acknowledge that. So now we have made it to the last thing on this list, understanding that any hate you feel, any jealousy, any envy is just your ego coping with your failures. If you see someone else succeeding and you are not happy for them, you are feeling jealousy. And the reason you feel 
feel jealousy is because deep down you want to be in the position that person is in, but something is stopping you from doing that. Whether it's your avoidance of hard work, whether it's your procrastination, your perfectionism, your self-belief, your subconscious mind, anything we've talked about in today's video, something is stopping you from doing that. And rather than facing that, your ego is protecting you and you're choosing to hate on someone else. If that is you, I'm sorry, but it might be good to reflect on why you're feeling this negative emotion around what someone else is doing and look inward and figure out how you can get in that same position. It's going to be hard, but don't avoid the hard work. That is everything I want to talk about today. 2024 is going to be a great year for all of us, and hopefully with this information, you can excel much faster this year than I did over the last 10 years. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. I will catch y'all in the next one, and shameless plug, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll go ahead and link that in the description down below. Coaching clients is my favorite part of this job. I love chatting with y'all individually, so you can check that out if you're interested, but I'll see y'all in the next video.